My name is Henriette. I come from Caracas. Caracas is located in Venezuela, which is at the north of South America. An amazing country um, with 30 million inhabitants, more or less, that we had. Um, when I, I raised in a, in a country like Venezuela, I, I was brought up in Venezuela, we had basically everything anybody, any human being would have wanted to have. We had freedom, uh, it was a rich country, not only gold, uh, mines, uh, different minerals, a uh, lot of natural resources and of course oil. Uh, Venezuela is known around the world because of the production of oil and actually it's uh, the third biggest and largest uh, reserves of oil of the world. Um, I was able to open companies of tourism uh, back uh, in the 90s. Uh, actually, we had all the opportunities that you wanted, not only for us as Venezuelans, uh, but also for foreigners that actually went to the country and uh, wanted to seek the, the opportunities that they didn't have in their own countries, such as Colombia or Bolivia, uh, Peru, Argentina even, uh, because also uh, po political problems, uh, not only because some of them were very poor countries or very badly administrated, but also politically because they had regimes, uh, totalitarian or dictatorships. So Venezuela just opened the doors uh, since many, many years ago, also to Europeans uh, escaping from the war or uh, after the war because of, of, uh, of lack of opportunities that they had also back uh, in, in their own countries. So we were used to actually open the doors to any person of any type, of any religion, of any color of skin, of any part of the world to the country of Venezuela and we were pleased we were happy actually we felt proud about it because we we believed that with the entrance of all of those communities uh, the country will become also very rich and actually it was very rich in the culture um, basically in Caracas you could eat anything you wanted from around the entire world because we had the best restaurants uh, gastronomically, you name it, we had it all, from India, from France, from Peru, Peruvian food, which is uh, very good, Italian food, the best Italian restaurants ever, really very, very nice. We, we thought really and we felt that the, we were the owners of the world, the, the entire world, uh, until things started changing politically. Uh, we took for granted uh, a lot of things, we didn't defend our constitution uh, back in the year 1998. Um, we always believed that we would continue having a democratic country because we were born in democracy and for more than 40 years. Without interruption, we had democracy. I believe it was the only democratic country that had for 40 years without interruption, uh, democracy, co in comparison with other countries, I think we were the leaders in, in democracy. We were the teachers, you know, the professors, the pro. But uh, through that democratic system arrived uh, a character named Hugo Chavez. And he took advantage of the good-hearted people that we really thought that this guy was or had good intentions for us, the Venezuelans, and it wasn't that way. He changed all the rules of the game, everything. He changed the constitution as soon as he arrived. He took the weapons away from the civilians. Uh, you, didn't, you couldn't have any permit anymore. He created his own laws. He uh, actually finger pointed people for every single institution. So they took over all the institutions, uh, the judges, all of, of the judges that we have in Venezuela are finger pointed by him or his people. Um, so many people had to flee the country and go elsewhere and actually seek for the same opportunities that we had back in the 80s and the 90s and even prior to that and come to the United States, some of them, some others go to Europe. Um, 
And actually, in my case, I decided to stay for uh, many years and to become an activist, to fight in the streets, to have to become an a, a participate in most of the protests uh, organized by different leaders of the opposition. Uh, I was kidnapped in the year 2017 by a group of thugs which are paid by the regime. Um, now it's Nicolás Maduro. Um, he's a successor of Hugo Chávez because Hugo Chávez died of cancer in the year 2013. And then Nicolás Maduro took over. And uh, the process towards communism, he was the one that really speeded it up. Uh, the speed has has been so so amazing that now even the airports are closed in my country. There's no way actually to get out of the country. It's like a huge huge cage. Um, I just want to actually give an advice, uh, a humble advice for from somebody that ha has actually lived and suffered as, as well as my family, because my my son lives here in the United States, my daughter lives elsewhere, my husband also lives here, but I have all my friends spread out around the world. I mean, from having nice reunions in my house that we were maybe 20, 30 persons, little by little, each weekend there was somebody less. They moved to Europe, some, uh, some others moved to Australia. So now the reunions, and it's not because of COVID, but since two or three years ago, most of the reunions are by Skype, by Zoom, or any social media. That's the only way we can actually get in touch with each other and, and, and actually um, spend some little time together. So it's, it's, it gets really sad because, and I understand that many people want to leave uh, because it's very difficult to live under a dictatorship. It's very, very, very difficult to live with shortages of electricity, shortages of, of gas, <laughs> you know, uh, shortages of water. Uh, there's no internet. Uh, there's actually no telephone lines like we used to have at home. So little by little, we cannot even communicate anymore, not even with the people that we love the most that are living outside of the country of Venezuela. So um, what I want to say with all of these words is that never take for granted your freedom. Never. You have to fight for it. You have to fight for your constitution. Um, don't let others decide for yourself. Like, for example, right now, we are only a few days away from uh, the, the uh, 3rd of November, the election day. You have to go out and vote. Everybody, everybody has to vote. Everybody has to um, actually uh, speak uh, and, and say what you want for your country. If you want to continue with the freedom that you have had and your traditions that you have had during all of these years, or you want somebody like Hugo Chavez or Nicolás Maduro, to take over your country and destroy what you know as the United States, because it happened to us. It could happen to you too. I mean, we were obnoxious when Cubans 20 years ago, 22 years ago, used to tell us and give us advice and say, be careful, be aware. These people are going to take over. The communists are going to take over. And we were like, ah, that's not going to happen in my country. We're not that way. We don't think that way. This is a democratic country. Things will never change. Well, it has. Um, actually, after Yemen and Syria, Venezuela is the third country with most of people that have fled or escaped from Venezuela. We have more than five million and a half of my fellow citizens that have left Venezuela and to seek for freedom elsewhere. You name it. They come to the United States, they go to Europe, they go to Australia. Many don't have money actually to take a plane or actually a bus and they walk. They're so desperate that they walk during weeks, during months from Venezuela just to arrive to Colombia or they go to Peru or they go to any other country that they can actually find a job or get a good school for the kids and have actually the freedom that they deserve as human beings. So my advice, go and vote, but vote wisely is very important.
think about the future, think about your family, think about your friends, think about your country.